The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up into heaven, and they did him homage. And then they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And together our Novena prayer and our Mass programs, St. Peregrine. And together we pray, O great St. Peregrine, you have been called the Wonder Worker because of the numerous miracles which you have obtained from God for those who have recourse to you. For so many years you bore in your own flesh the debilitating disease of cancer. I seek God's healing. Help me to imitate your enduring faith in the face of my great challenge, and that I might trust the Lord as you did in your time of affliction. Help me to find the strength to proclaim God's presence in my life, despite the anguish and fear of the disease causes in me and my loved ones. And here, pause for a moment for all those intentions for ourselves and our loved ones. O oh, glorious Saint Peregrine, aided in this way by your powerful intercession, I will sing to God now and for all eternity a song of gratitude for his great goodness and mercy. Amen. If you go up to the top of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, you will be shown a little shrine which marks the traditional place from which the Lord ascended into heaven and you will be shown a footprint allegedly left by Jesus in the rock as he blasted off to heaven. It's not an entirely convincing sign since Jesus probably had, according to this imprint, size 17 feet (laughs) and two big toes on the same foot. (laughs) But what's this a sign of? I suppose it's a sign of the strength of people's regret for what they feel to be absent. When those we love die or separated from us by a great deal of distance, we miss them. They leave a gap in our lives. We are lonely without them. And we often cherish memories of them that are fixed on the things that they have given us, on places they're associated with, like the chair they used to sit in, or things they once used. Sometimes we keep photographs of them. And when we look at the photograph, it's not always satisfying. It's a bittersweet experience. It doesn't always bring the person closer to us. It reminds us of the loss of the separation. So trying to fix the last footprint of Jesus on the earth is a little like that. Missing somebody is important. We only miss those we have loved. And I've been away from my parish in Southern California in the desert. After Mass, people will come to me sometimes and say, Oh, Father, we missed you. And I say, thank goodness for that. It's when they stop saying that I need to be worried, yeah? Mm-hmm. If you don't miss them, it's a sign that you never really love them. So God, grief is part of the price we pay for love. Now, you might think that parting from Jesus would make the disciples sad that they would be sunk in grief. But according to Luke, it seems to have the opposite effect. Luke says they worshipped him, went back full of joy, and were continually in the temple praising God. Now, people do very strange things when they're shocked by loss or they're grieving. But as far as I know, they don't go around with great joy and spend most of their time going to church. Now, so Luke is giving us a clue to what this means in the phrase, full of joy. 
Because he only uses it at one other point in his gospel, right back in chapter 2. It's the only mention of it. It's the message of the angel to the shepherds when Jesus is born. Behold, I bring you news of great joy that will come to all the people. It's not just for you. It's for all the people. It's not just a private revelation. It's for all people. So the angel brought the news of the incarnation, the birth of God made man, to the shepherds. But it wasn't to be their task to bring it to all peoples. And the news of great joy was that God and humanity were made one in Christ, in this baby. Our human nature was taken up into the life of God in the individual life of the child who was baby and God. So this is the news of great joy. And their joy stems from the fact that things on earth are definitively and permanently ruled from where Jesus now is. It's as if the human enterprise here on earth has a new CEO. Things are being directed then from where he is. Earthly rulers may think that they are in charge, but they're not. And at the midpoint of his gospel, Luke writes, when the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. For Jerusalem is the place of his being taken up. And he distinctly and definitely turned his face to it, to being taken up. Well, his being taken up refers to his crucifixion, the moment in which he was lifted up from the earth. Why? To draw all people to himself. This news of great joy is for all people. It could also be taken to refer to his resurrection from the dead. But in the ascension, he has been taken up to the place of glory that is eternally his. Now in the temple in Jerusalem, the high priest went up into the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement, carrying the blood of sacrificed animals. And the only other person allowed to enter the Holy of Holies was a new king on the day he was enthroned, only once. The king, the representative of the people, their mediator between themselves and God went into the Holy Holy of Holies, that symbol then of heaven. So the Psalms and the other texts of Scripture speak about the king going up to a place of honor in the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel. And that's important background for understanding the ascension of Jesus. We often think of him as our high priest, but he's also our king, our true king. He is our high priest who enters the Holy of Holies, not the earthly one in Jerusalem, but the great and perfect one in heaven. And the blood he carries is not that of animals, but his own blood, which is offered once and for all to gain an eternal redemption, as the letter to the Hebrews said. And seated at the right hand of the Father, enthroned as the judge of all, Jesus is our King and our High Priest. So Ascension Day is then the original feast of Christ the King. Because of his love and obedience, the Father has exalted him and given him the name above all other names. So we celebrate its victory and its meaning for us, the fact that he has become the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. So as the prayers of today's Mass put it, he has been taken up to heaven to claim for us a share in his divine life, and where he has gone, we hope to follow. And when we speak of Jesus ascending into heaven, We have to interpret that against the scriptural background of space and time. We shouldn't think of it as to focus on a vision of two specific localities above and below, which are related to each other in a kind of space-time continuum. But we should stretch our minds and our imaginations to try to think of two different kinds of space. Jesus has entered God's space which in a sense is no space at all, a different kind of space with a different kind of time. God's space and ours, what we call heaven and earth, for lack of better phrases, are different, but they're not far from each other. Different, but not distant. So in professing that, we're being drawn after him to where he has gone before. We're proclaiming that one day these two will be united in a totally mysterious way and that Jesus will be present to us in a radically different way to the way we now know. The message of the angel is that Jesus has been taken up into heaven. 
What is heaven? Where is it? Well, heaven is not up there. It's not down there. We speak that way sometimes because we have no better way of talking about it. But we don't really mean it. The important point, the essential teaching of today's feast is that Jesus is now in heaven. And many people will not be surprised by this. They might even say something like, big deal. This is because it's common these days for people to think that everyone who has died is in heaven. Well, people may say it, but it's not necessarily true. It's not automatic that people go to heaven. You have to want to and act as if you want to. In fact, before the ascension of Jesus, no human being was in what we call heaven. Jesus Christ is the first. That's because where he is, there is heaven, blessedness, and joy. And it's only because he has opened the way for us through his passion, death, and resurrection that we can hope to be with him in heaven, which means to be with him. We can hope this for ourselves, but Christian charity demands that we hope this for others too. But to hope for something is not to take something for granted. Throughout the history of Christianity, people have tried to imagine what heaven is like. It's often represented in images of a palace or a mansion with a gate. Sometimes we think of choirs of angels, clouds and rainbows. But heaven is a being with an intense relationship. Heaven is being with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's being with the God who gave us life. Heaven is being with those whom we have loved in this life in a new way. It's also being then with those we should have loved in this life and those we should have loved better in this life. Well, hell is the opposite. It's the absence from all those things we have loved, from all those that we have loved. Because hell is an eternal loneliness. When we long for heaven, all that we desire, all that we hope for, is the company of the saints in Christ. Well, today we give thanks that Christ, who ascended into heaven first, has opened the way for us to be with that company. As the old hymn has it, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in.